Hello folks and welcome back to the Moshex mainframe channel. Uh, today we're going to be looking at yet another uh, programming language for our beloved IBM mainframe. Um, as you know, uh, we've had this mini-series um, on uh, uh, ancient or even not so ancient, but um, it's definitely mainframe programming languages. We had one on PL1 where we just very superficially explored uh, what PL1 is and how it looks. Then we just a few days ago, we looked at uh, basic uh, 360, which obviously was more about how to get it up uh, on the mainframe and get it to run because um, there's no need for a lot of explanation on basic. And today we're gonna be looking at the uh, XPL programming language, um, which um, is, is a very interesting language. And I've always had uh, an interest in this language because it's kind of like the yak that we all know in the Linux world. If you look at this monitor here, let me make the screen a little bit bigger um, so that um, everybody can read along. Uh, profiles, edit, and custom font, uh, 15 I think is good. Okay, so um, you may know this. Um, tool here from the Linux or from the Unix world. Um, we don't have it actually installed, um, but uh, we could easily install. Yak is, is a compiler generator, basically a parser generator. And um, XPL is a similar thing, but goes further. Um, first of all, XPL uh, is an old language. It was uh, comes from the um, 60s, late 60s, oh, actually here it is, from the mid, from 1968, um, and, um, and I think it was originally written by the uh, computer science department at the University of Toronto in Canada. Um, it has similar um, syntax like PL1, it actually derives from PL1, um, and uh, it is a compiler generator. Um, now, uh, the, one of the good things about XPL is that XPL itself is easy to bootstrap. What does it mean? Bootstrapping a programming language means um, getting a programming language as, as far as so that the compiler can compile itself because it's written in its own language. Um, so, for instance, uh, you know, what, if we if you look at the video we saw well, uh, created last uh, just a few days ago on Basic 360. That is not a bootstrap compiler because it is written in PL1 and compiles a, into a basic interpreter and compiler, but it, that interpreter is not able to interpret to, to compile itself. Um, whereas XPL was from the ground up developed so that it could, it could compile itself. PL1, by the way, also compiles itself, even though the PL1 compiler that we use on TK4 on our MBS 3.8 is actually written in assembler, but PL1 by definition is able to compile itself and there are compilers that compile it themselves in PL1. Um, other languages are similar. Um, C, for instance, is a very good example of a language that can compile itself. Mm -hmm. Recently also Golang, uh, the Go programming language from Google has been uh, taken far enough so that it is, it is able to compile itself, but for the first four or five years it wasn't. So. Uh, it's not a trivial thing to make programming language bootstrap itself, uh, but XPL is written so that it can easily bootstrap itself. And one of the good outcomes of that, um, uh, of, the, of this kind of approach to writing a programming language or a compiler is that it's easy to port. And in fact, if you look here, XPL has been ported to a number of systems, including of course our system 360 and uh, S370 um, uh, systems. It ran on the UNIVAC, on the XDS, on the legendary XDS. It, runs, it ran, of course, on the PDP, on DEX PDP systems, 10 and 20. And it even runs now on Linux and FreeBSD. There is a port of XPL to Linux. And uh, that was only completed, completed two years ago, in 2015. And why is that a good indication? It's an indication that if they, if they port the compiler and the programming, programming language to um, to Linux in 2015, it means it's still relevant. And I actually do think it's still quite relevant. Um, so um, other than being able to uh, use XPL to write compilers um, and parses for compilers, 
it is a perfectly normal programming language as well and we're going to see in this video how to program a simple but but fun program in xbl to run on uh, on our uh, beloved um, tk4 3 mvs 3.8 but um i will leave it to you um to go and explore more there's a very good book about the xbl here it's just the one you see on the screen i will leave it to you um uh to uh, explore more about XPL instead today I will do some terminal stuff and I will show you how to uh, get it up and running on our TK4 before we get there I just want to say below this video is going to be a link uh, to the yet another github um, repository created called Moshix XPL 360 where I have everything in there the tape image with all the contents of the source of XPL um, and the JCL required to load it into our uh, mainframe. Uh, everything is in there. So if you download this repository, um, either by cloning it uh, or by just downloading it from this button here, um, then you should be up and running within minutes. So uh, to, to show you how to get it again, the link is going to be below in the description below the video you're watching. Um, so to get it up and running, I have a freshly installed uh, copy of MBS 3.8 TK4. I am at um, update 8, um, which this indicates. I've already gone to the unattended uh, directory and set it to console mode. So if I just start it, we should be up and running within about a minute or so. Let's connect the terminal. All righty. There we go. Um, up very soon now uh, if you have cloned the xpl repository you will have something that looks like this so we have here a tape directory where the where the directory with the uh, tape is containing the xpl source uh, by the way xpl is open source software since always since the 60s um, and then there's a jcl where we have uh, three jcl streams one is the reload one that loads uh, expel from tape into our MBS system. Then we have a job that creates the procedure for, for invoking XPL um, in sys2.proclib. And then we have a simple uh, program uh, in XPL to show you how it works. So um, I would say we get, since this is probably, yeah, it's already up and running. Let's log in. Um, it's obviously nothing there. Yeah, so, um, okay. So uh, the very first job we're gonna run is this one, reload. Let's look at what's in reload. Um, obviously I appended already Herc1 uh, with the standard password of TK4. If you've changed your password, you, may, you need to change the second line here of this job, very important. Um, I made it a class H, so it goes into the JS2 spool, so we can uh, look at it with the JS2 spool viewer. And I made it um, so that it goes into uh, a high-level qualifier qualifier called SYSC for compilers, uh, because I want to install my compilers under that kind of high-level qualifier. And I'm going to put it into pub001. By the way, um, XPL was written explicitly for the 2311 uh, disks uh, from the mid 60s. So the blocking factor is so that there's one block per track on those disks. And as disks got bigger and bigger, um, the efficiency of XPL on bigger disks goes down drastically. And uh, Jay Mosley uh, in his infinite wisdom has, ch has changed the source code of XPL so that it works with a um, record length of 7,200 bytes. Uh, and that's as big as we can uh, get it to work. It needs to be in a 3350 volume. Um, and anything beyond that uh, I just just does not work for XPL. It, it will not compile itself. So uh, this is one example where people were a little short-sighted when they developed it. They thought you know that um, disks wouldn't grow as fast as they did and in fact disk sizes have grown miraculously such just as the same as processor speeds and, and RAM sizes um, and but it still works fine um, so this this uh, job stream should work out of the box without any issues um, 
uh, the only thing you have to make sure is that you have the user ID and password matching your system. So let's get it through the card reader, dev init, and 00C is the card reader, uh, Moshix, XPL, JCL, reload. Um, oh, well, first of all, we need to attach a disk. Sorry about this, gentlemen and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's attach attach 480 on the tape on the tape drive 480. We'll type uh, we'll mount this tape called Moshix uh, XPL tape. Okay. Uh, well, let's dev in it then. Dev in it. Okay, so the disk is now mounted on the device. And now what we're going to do is uh, put this reload job through the uh, through the card reader. So okay, and that seems to be done already. So we, if I press enter here on this window, we should see it immediately. And here it is R for reload. Yep, and it went through with z error codes zero on all steps. Um, the outcome of this should be now that we have a sysc as i level qualifier for several data sets which is a load data set uh, this is already pre-compiled object and the source uh, this is the compiler itself by the way um, xpl is a dynamic memory allocated uh, system meaning that strings are uh, do not need to be defined they can be um, there can be dynamic length as a result of that you there is actually a monitor running uh, calling like a, an online library for the XPL language which is called Xmon which is what this is here and this does some garbage collection dynamic garbage collection so that uh, RAM can be regained when when memory is no longer needed um, so this will be one of the very first cases of garbage collected languages um, the you know the was well the best known one uh, of, of 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 which would be Java today. Java obviously uh, does a garbage collection in the background because it's running as a virtual machine in, in the JVM uh, system. Uh, there's all, several others, but XPL will be one of the first ones, if not the first one I am aware of that is a garbage collected language. So um, the source is all here. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, this explains the grammar. This is a BNF notation, backwards knower form. Um, for those people interested in compiler design, so it's all here. Um, and that seems to have done well. So now we need to load one more job, which is the uh, the one that creates the process. Um, and just let's look at it for a second. What this what this job does uh, so again you may need to change your your user and password uh, very make sure because you may not be able to run this through the card reader otherwise so here um, we copy stuff over to 6.2 proclip um, and then we um, compile um, a program yeah basically it's compiling its own library and then we have the various uh, procedure steps uh, so this is just compiled this is compile and execute um, and let's see what else we have um, just uh, execute the previously compiled uh, XPL program and then syntax analysis so uh, this is a very simple job step. Let's make, make it smaller again. And let's just run it. And let's go back and see. Oops. Yeah. S, yes, that's us. And uh, return code zero. So this seems to have done well. Um, now. What we're going to do is, as a further step, now we're going to run a sample program in XPL. For that purpose, I'm going to upload um, through using the file transfer. Um, XP 
the LB -er. and I'm going to put it in her 01 test CNTL X E L B -er. send it to host this is TSO transfer yeah so we should have it now in our perk 01 test cntl yeah there it is uh one thing that i see here is just like with pl1 something that i should have mentioned when we looked at pl1 a couple of weeks ago is that the first column cannot be used in any um pl1 program and so xpl being in the center of pl1 is the same thing so now i see here that this program actually starts in the first column that's probably because it was copied through a, a pc so very simple we move this all by one all the way to the bottom okay so this was all moved and let's just see if we can execute this and get some um, sensitive output out of this this is a program written by Jay Mosley in September 2008 so that will be nine years ago it's the 99 beers program well known uh, program that just does the lyrics for the bar for the for the song 99 beer bottles so, uh, so um, let's execute this and let's go look at the spool yeah return code zero for the compile and for the go and now we can look at the output so here is the compilation uh, the XPL compiler here um, that's doing its job and here is the output 99 bottles of beer on the wall 99 bottles of beer take one down pass it around 90 bills of beer on the wall 90 bills on the wall and that's the uh, the well-known beer algorithm <laughs> or pro or program um, it works perfectly so um, this has been very short and painless um, XPL um, compiler generator probably the only one or the best one there is on the main on, for MBS 3.8 anyway on the mainframe uh, maybe ZOS has the yak uh, yet another compiler compiler uh, Unix program on their USS system I don't know but I would think they probably do and uh, and this is how we have yet another programming language installed Again, I'm not going to go into the full, um, or not even into a partial um, exploration of the XPL language. Uh, there's an ex uh, good manuals on the web. There are very good books to buy for very little money. But this shows you how to get it up on your system and get it to run in probably less than three or four minutes once you have the uh, GitHub archive or repository copied on your system. So this is it for today. Um, please subscribe to my channel to see future videos. If you like this particular video, press on the thumbs up button. And I uh, hope to see you soon for future videos on the Moshik's mainframe channel. Thank you. Goodbye.